Hi everyone. Now we're going to talk about making a box and whisker plot. If you missed the video on the five number summary, you should probably see that first. Um, along the way of making the box and whisker plot, we're also going to take a quick look at the range and interquartile range. So in the last video, we looked at the five number summary of uh, our 16 um, heights of girls basketball players. And we came up with these five numbers, the minimum, the first quartile, the, min the median or second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum. With those numbers, we can go ahead and draw the box and whisker plot. You first start by drawing the number line, which has to go at least from the minimum to the maximum. This one goes one further, but it needs to go at least from the minimum to the maximum. Then you plot each of the five numbers of the five number summary with a dot above the number line. You label them as min, q1, q2, q3, and max. And you give the plot a heading, like box and whisker plot of the heights of girls basketball players. Then you draw points from the minimum to the first quartile, and from the third quartile to the maximum. At between the uh, first and third quartiles, you draw a box. And the middle of the box, where the second quartile is, you draw a line through the point, and that is your box and whisker plot. Notice that um, where the Q1 and Q3 are, these lines go directly, the box goes directly through those points. And that's really all there is to the box and whisker plot. There's a, uh, there are two ranges here that you should be aware of. One of them is the max, the range of the whole data set, which is the maximum minus the minimum, which in this case is 11. And then there's the interquartile range, which is between Q3 and Q1, which is Q3 minus Q1, 72 minus 68 is 4. Okay, so the range gives you the range of the whole data set. The interquartile range gives you the range of the middle half of the data. And that's all there is to the box and whisker plot. In our next video, we'll learn what mean absolute deviation is and how to calculate it.